with day two of the draft about to start, who are some of the players that the New York Jets can target to make this team better? Inside, and a beauty! Hall running free! Brees Hall inside the 10! He's gonna score! What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Talking Jets with Tigo. My name is Tigo, and after a night of being able to relax, think about the pick, and really break down and get deep dives into the Will McDonald pick, I'm starting to like this pick more and more, especially when you put your GM hat on and you stop thinking just beyond the one year, but that doesn't change the fact that we've got day two and day three of the draft going on, and the New York Jets, as of right now, only have one pick in the second round, so we need to make sure that this pick counts. Who are some prospects that the New York Jets can target on day two, well, there is a couple of different ways that the New York Jets can go, and honestly, a ton of really good players slipped out of the first round um, and, and are available here in the second. I think we're going to start with everyone's favorite player and... With all of the trades that happen, have a le has a legitimate shot of making it to 43, and that's offensive center John Michael Schmitz out of Minnesota. The New York Jets are the only team to have met with John Michael Schmitz. I'm sorry, John Michael Schmitz is the only player that the New York Jets have actually met with more than once. They met him at the Combine, and they had a meeting with him at the Combine. They invited him for a top 30 visit, and they had a private workout with him. They have done a ton of research on John Michael Schmitz, and outside of... The Arizona Cardinals, who I have a hard time seeing taking two offensive linemen, one in the first and one in the second, especially with the state of that defense. And then really, the uh, the Saints and the Raiders, who could take an offensive lineman, I have a hard time really thinking that John Michael Schmitz is going to get taken by any of these teams. Now, watch out. There are some teams that have a ton of draft capital who might really like John Michael Schmitz and want to jump up into the second round to go get them. But with guys like Michael Mayer, Brian Branch, Will Levis, Joey Porter Jr., Osiris Torrance, all of these guys still on the board, you have to assume that that's where the targets are going to be. There's still a ton of wide receivers on the board as well. And you hope that maybe a run on wide receivers and corners happen because the cornerback class falls off pretty heavily after the next three or four corners. And if Joey Porter Jr. goes 32 to the Steelers, who, they, who are actively trying to sell that pick, or even, you know, 34 to... The Lions, if they go and get Joey Porter Jr., that's when you can start to see a run on corners because now you got Joey Porter Jr., you've got Cam Smith, you've got, you know, a, bu a, a bunch of guys that can just fly off the board because the cornerback class, while deep, is starting to run out. We saw a couple of them taken in, you know, the first and all of that stuff. Now, John Michael Schmitz goes to the top of my board. I know that the New York Jets fan base really, really wants a tackle. I also would like a tackle, but I think the biggest problem with the offensive tackle position is just the depth of the position. At 43, I don't know if Dewan Jones makes it that far. The Rams need an offensive lineman. The Raiders need an offensive lineman. You know, <clears throat> there's a ton of teams that need offensive line help and that they could definitely use that offensive line help. The Green Bay Packers at 42 might need an offensive lineman that's a, a later pick. And outside of Dewan Jones, are you really going to reach at 43 for a guy like a Matthew Bergeron, uh, maybe a Nick Saldivieri, a Blake Freeland, a Tyler Steen? I don't know. I don't know if any of those guys are worth that pick. We'll have to see, but keep an eye out. Dewan Jones, Matthew Bergeron, I have second round grades on both of those guys, and so maybe if you're higher on them than I am, then there you go. Like That can be a great pick. And we know from yesterday that the New York Jets aren't going to reach for a position of need. They're going to play to their board. And if that's the case, you have to ask yourself about two players that are at positions that we don't really need the help at. But they are so good at those positions that maybe you just take them as an upgrade, kind of like what the New York Jets did with Sauce Garner, which is ironic because one of them is a corner, and that's the cornerback Brian Branch out of Alabama. I know a lot of places have him listed as a safety. I don't see him as a safety at the next level. He played almost all of his reps at Alabama in the slot cornerback position. That's what he does incredibly well. 569 of his total 750 defensive snaps came out of the slot corner. And while I love me some Michael Carter II, Brian Branch is one heck of a player. 
you have to have at least that conversation about Brian Branch. And the same thing could be said about Michael Mayer, the tight end out of Notre Dame. Now, the tight end room is incredibly crowded. We took you know, a, a tight end last year in Jeremy Ruckert, and we have two tight ends signed to big money. But if Michael Mayer is there, he is such a good prospect. You at least need to have the conversation. You at least need to look that way. I don't know if the New York Jets do that or if they go in that direction. I know that I wouldn't. And now let's talk about the other guys that I really think are going to be options on that side of the ball. Um, number one would be uh, Dion Henley, the linebacker out of Washington State. He would be a great fit for the New York Jets as a weak side linebacker. He would immediately start pushing, you know, Quincy Williams for his job. And he's so good in the run support that you would see a lot of those problems that we saw in the run game last year kind of diminish. Also, I think he has the skill set that if we needed him to, he could play the Mike linebacker, play that middle linebacker, and work downhill in the run game or cover tight ends and all of that stuff so that we can bump C.J. Mosley to that weak side linebacker who we know is a good tackler, who we know is good in the run game. So Dion Henley, linebacker out of Washington State, I really, really like him and what he can provide. Drew Sanders, linebacker out of Arkansas, another great option for that weak side linebacker who's going to be in charge of one covering, you know, tight ends if that's what we need him to be. He's not great in coverage. It's not what I would love for him to do, but Drew Sanders out of Arkansas is a dog. And if you can get him, if you can make sure that the Steelers don't take him or anything like that, that would be an excellent addition to the linebacker room and to this team, as well as we're going to talk about one more linebacker, Trenton Simpson out of Clemson, another guy that can really come in help that weak side linebacker, help in, you know, the run game and in the, the run support. He's okay in coverage, can help cover tight ends. So there's the linebackers there. And then if we're looking at the interior defensive linemen, we can always have the conversation about, you know, Keanu Benton is still on the board here. Is he an option for the New York Jets? Uh, do you look at him, a very, very versatile defensive tackle, really, really good with his hands, a pass rushing defensive tackle, you know, 6'4", 300 pounds, right around that rate, uh, right around that uh, spot where we like our defensive tackles. He's a little bit on the heavier side when you look at our defensive tackles weight, but that's a great option. Tsuli Tuipolotu, he's listed as an edge outside of USC, but in reality, he plays more of a three-tech for I and in the New York Jets system, that's an interior defensive lineman. You would be aligning him up over the guard. And the New York Jets have met with Tui Tui Pelotu. That's another great option there. And so again, there are depends on how high you are on a guy like Kobe Turner. I've seen him ranked as high as the second round, as low as the third round. Another interior defensive lineman that you can target. And because everybody's so addicted to the wide receiver position, even though I don't see us really taking one, does a guy like Jalen Hyatt make some sense? He's got that deep speed and that deep threat. Does a guy like Marvin Mims make a, uh, some sense to replace Elijah Moore and his skill set with Marvin Mims running a sub 4 4 40, a little bit on the shorter side? Do you take a high upside wide receiver like a Michael Wilson? who's had a ton of injuries but has all of those elite traits, uh, uh, Ole Miss wide receiver like Jonathan Mingo, who's just an all-around wide receiver. Those are a couple of the options that the New York Jets can target. If I had to make my bet, I would think that the New York Jets, if John Michael Schmitz is on the board, he, they're going to go and get John Michael Schmitz. If he's, uh, if he's off the board, I think the next target is probably going to be Dewan Jones. If he's off the board, it's probably one of the linebackers, if I had to make my guess, starting with Drew Sanders, Deion Henley, and then uh, the Clemson kid. I forget his name. Uh, what's his name? What's his name? Give me a sec. i got to find his name. Drew Sanders. What am I doing? Linebacker. This is like a live show. Trenton Simpson. Jesus, I'm sorry, guys. All of these guys have second round grades on them. All of these guys can be those picks. All of these guys, maybe not Trenton Simpson, but again, they all had those grades at one point. So I would love to see what Drew Sanders looks like in a New York Jets defense, and we'll see what happens. Let me know who you think the Jets should target in the second round. And last but not least, go Jets.